here at Virago, we do what we call forgotten spirits. So basically we focus on rum, gin, and brandy. All of our brandies are still aging in the back since um, brandies take a few years to age. We started, we use a Calvados. We're using local apples out near Albemarle County and it's an apple and pear brandy is what we've got back there aging right now. We've done a few of those. Uh, we call them forgotten spirits because a lot of times when people think of rum, they think of like a Captain Morgan's or maybe something they had in college that was very syrupy. Our rum is the complete opposite of that. They're sipping rums, aged rums. There's actually no sugar in our rum at all. So when you have like a black rum or a spiced rum, those rums have flavor, caramel coloring, syrups added. All of the flavor and color with our uh, rum is just coming from the barrel. So goes into the barrel clear. And as you know, I don't know if people know, but with aging in the hot and humid seasons, it expands into the barrel and contracts in the winter in and out. And that's what pulls all the flavor from the wood. And then that's when you get the darker brown colors, much like you would a whiskey or even when you do an añejo, tequila, things like that. Same process. That's something else. With making it without the sugars, does that require a special process or are you just flat out skipping that ingredient? So when I say no added sugar, uh, all rum does come from sugar cane. But once you distill it, there's actually no sugar left. And then the, the rums I was talking about earlier, then they add sugar after distillation. And there are even some brands out there that are still making very delicious rums with added sugar. It's just a different style. Here at Virago, um, one Brad, the owner, is on keto diet, so he doesn't have any added sugar stuff. And the other reason is we just prefer, it's, there's nothing wrong with an added sugar rum, but we prefer the natural flavor from the oak. So um, in addition, and we'll go through our rums later, you'll see we also have different finishes. So we get barrels in from different regions of Europe and then finish the rum in that barrel to pull out different flavor. So it's tasty and uh, I, I guess uh, good for you, or at least better for you, right? A little less of a hangover, you know? Uh, oh, Although I like that, okay. We can still power through it anyways. Well, that's fantastic. Well, uh, you're there at the distillery. Uh, I can see the bottles uh, behind you. You've got some in front of you too, right? Can we uh, get a little yeah, sneak peek well, at some of these? Start with, um, we'll start with our flagship. This is the Four Port Rum. So this rum, uh, a lot of rum. So basically all the rum we've distilled, other than our Unaged 151, is still in barrels. So we're so new. There's a lot of different strategies when you start. Uh, people will do an Unaged product. And some people do a vodka. Some people might do a white whiskey or an unaged rum. Um, for us, we wanted to do something aged, but something still unique. So what we did was we blended styles. So when you're having, um, when you're drinking aged rum, there's three different styles. There's British, French, and Spanish. British rum is uh, usually more like funky. They use open air fermentation. So when they say the word funky, that's more of like fruit forward notes. You'll get banana, you'll get pineapple. So we took six rums from four different countries. And we took British rums, Barbados and Jamaican island rums, Nicaragua and Panamanian, that's the Spanish style. That's, you'll get more sweeter notes like um, caramel, vanilla, things like that. And we blended styles. So uh, there's really no cross styles out there. And then there's the other style is French, which is rum agricole. You'll sometimes see that spelled R-H-U-M. And that's much more vegetable. That comes from cane juice, where we're using molasses here. And that's what's used in all these rums. So the Four Port is our award-winning blend, 86 proof. Uh, this is our most versatile for the cocktails. As we get into the other rums, this one we still do. I like to sip it on the rocks personally, but this is for me, makes a great daiquiri. We do it in our painkiller. It's probably the most versatile for cocktails and it's really good for traditional tiki cocktails because of the naughty uh, added sugar. So with tiki drinks, uh, you know, usually you're using orange juice, pineapple juice, all of those things have natural sugars, so it's really nice to use a, a rum that doesn't have sugar added because then it doesn't taste as syrupy. So with the four port, um, like I said, I just sip it on the rocks. I'm just gonna drink it neat here today. And so this one, you'll get um, from the barrel, you'll get like some vanilla, some caramel, some creme brulee notes, uh, even makes a really good old fashioned. And always when tasting with any spirit, you always want to, whether it's the first of the day or not, it's always going to shock your palate. So to get more notes, you usually do one sip and then kind of like let that a tiny little, that'll kind of coat your tongue. And then on the second sip, you'll pick up a lot more of the uh, tasting notes you're looking for. So in addition to distilling, we're actually distilling black rum today. We just finished another run of that. So we've been distilling the entire time since we've been open. But like I said, 
we love aged products. So we use our four port blend that we created and then we get different barrels in. So one of the other ones for sipping, we took the four port, the same exact juice, and we got ruby wine barrels from Portugal and we did our port cask wrong. So this is the four port that you just had finished nine months in a port cask. Now the port cask, this is our silver label, that gives it a little bit of light smoke, cherry, tobacco notes. This one I'll do, I personally love to sip it neat. If I'm making a cocktail with it, I usually do a stirred cocktail. So I'll do an old fashioned, we, got, we do one called the Rich Manhattan, which is just a riff on a classic Manhattan recipe. And the nice thing about um, these type of rums is we have people come in all the time and they say, oh, I'm a whiskey drinker, I don't drink rum. Well, they're thinking of that rum that I was talking about, the very syrupy, the, the flavored rums of the world. I'll make them an old fashioned with that and they don't even know rum could drink like this. You know, it is meant to be sipped and you'll get very similar notes to a lot of bourbons out there. So that one, same thing, take a sip that neat. And then I always like to compare, you start with the four port, then you taste the port cast, you see how it changed the four port flavor. And then we go to our sherry cast. Sherry cast, we actually use Pedro Jimenez barrels, which is a very well-known unfortunately very expensive wine producer in Spain. But we got, so we got a few of those barrels in and we did the same process, four port finished into the sherry cask. And whenever you hear about finishing, no matter what spirits you're talking about, it's usually kind of a six to 12 is kind of the like rule of thumb. You just taste along the way. At the end of the day, it's still, you have to just taste the whole time because longer doesn't always mean better. Uh, sometimes it'll, sometimes spirits will break down the wood and then you get too much of the, Basically, you're getting a, almost like an ash flavor that you don't want that's undesirable. So you taste along the way, and you can tell when it's ripe and ready, and when it starts to, you know, if it's about to turn or whatever, and you know it's ready to be pulled. So we knew that the port cask was ready at nine months. The sherry cask was actually ready at six months. So our sherry cask, I'm going to grab a bottle of that just to show you. This is our purple label. This is our... Our latest in the four port series, uh, the next one will be a cognac cask. This sherry cask gets a lot more, um, the sherry barrel brought out a lot more nut flavors, walnut. Um, you'll get a little bit more of like, a, oh, let, let me check our tasting notes again. Cause I'm, oh, a lot of more of the tobacco and cinnamon in this one too. So this one, total sipper. I'm really not doing this one in cocktails. If I do make a cocktail with it, it might be an old fashioned, but in general, you can just sip this neat with a cigar makes a great pairing with cigars. We've had a, there's a cigar lounge in town that this is their favorite rum in the area. They use it all the time. So yeah, that's just our kind of our way as, as our own spirit ages, we just constantly are getting in different unique barrels and finishing our four port blend.